Hi, my name is Grant Jennings from Goldwyn Semiconductor, and we're showing a variety of uh, FPGA solutions. We're a FPGA uh, manufacturing company, uh, mainly China-based, and we've been around since 2014. Um, so we sell and manufacture FPGAs um, with a variety of uh, additional functionality. This is your chip? Yes, that's our chip. Um, this is our gw one ns e Two FPGA, which has a hardened Cortex M3, two to four K lookup tables, as well as embedded puff based security. Um, so, physically inclinable function um, basically regenerates keys at power up so they're not saved in flash, um, providing an ultra secure solution. What's the main use of your FPGA? What um, do people do with it? So it, it's a really broad market. FPGA is a really broad market, um, but we have a lot of opportunities in video interfacing, bridging, AI, um, uh, mainly at the edge. So um, consumer applications that need a little bit more performance than say a microcontroller, um, but the cost, power, and size of a microcontroller um, kind of an equivalent. So it's level. affordable FPGA, but sometimes the FPGA is very expensive, right? That's true. Um, our FPGAs are very low cost, very low power, um, very small form factor. Um, you know, uh, in a millimeter by millimeter and a half by millimeter and a half, um, you can have an FPGA that can do um, video interfacing. Um, so very flexible, high bandwidth, um, low Most power. affordable FPGAs in the world. Uh, yes, that's one that's, of them. That's our uh, that's our claim. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, um, and also very feature driven. So, um, just what, to, what's happening here? Um, so this is a uh, this is a um, doing a uh, doing a picture frame viewer. It's just a, a solution example um, showing Ethernet um, Ethernet um, loopback as well as um, driving a display. Um, kind of a all in one solution for driving a display, driving Ethernet and uh, um, driving uh, no, uh, additional interfaces for video. And this one? Um, oh yeah, and one more thing about this. This is running a RISC-V core, um, so uh, a popular um, uh, RISC-V IP core, and we have a variety of hard and soft processor cores that are available for free with our device. So it's uh, hardware RISC-V, it's not FPGA emulated RISC-V? It's the, our RISC V cores currently are uh, soft cores, but on the on our ARM cores we have available for free an ARM Cortex One, ARM Cortex Three soft cores, as well as an ARM Cortex M Three hard core. Cortex M Zero, you mean? Or yes, yes, it's yeah. an M One, which is basically an M Zero, but optimized a little bit more for FPGA. Ah, okay. Um, so that's available in soft core, but the M Three is soft or hardcore. So. Um, there's also a lot of uh, new trends around the FPGAs, right? People can do a bunch of new stuff, or people are thinking of new things to do. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of new things, such as AI, um, with our FPGAs, and because we have the ability, particularly in the camera area and um, video interfacing area, we have the interfaces to do it, as well as extended block RAM and extended memory. So we have devices that have in addition to your um, four to uh, 18K lookup tables, you have an extended PS RAM of four or eight megabytes of additional memory. So that's really good for doing our AI accelerator um, that allows you to um, use that memory as scratch pad memory or even doing frame buffering um, with your video stream. What's the main difference between a uh, uh, Xilinx, Altera, and a GoWin? Um, so, really, um, even though we're both, all, the, all three of us are FPGA companies, um, Xilinx and Altera really focus on either high performance or high density. We really focus on power, cost, and size, and really are focused on applications in consumer electronic devices, as well as industrial and automotive applications. So, price sensitive applications, power sensitive applications, that's where we play. And uh, something over there in that corner, yeah. what's happening there? Yeah, so we have our um, Edge AI demo. So this is um, using a GoWin FPGA all-in-one chip um, solution using a CIFAR 10 data set and an AI network. 
It's pre-trained network, so this is um, doesn't go to the cloud or anything. It just is um, directly on the edge um, and directly all in the device. So if I hold up an image, um, say of a horse, should detect. There it goes. Um, so it detects it as a horse. It can detect 10 inference outputs in, um, in hundreds of milliseconds, which is about 80x faster than what it would do in just a normal uh, regular processor. So is that one of, the, one of the things with FPGA, as far as I understand, it gives freedom to do different things than uh, ARM cores or something like that, right? Yeah. But what, what, do you, what is this with this says ARM design start right here? So what's your relationship with, uh, with um, ARM? So we are uh, um, key partners with, with ARM in their Design Start program, which allows us to um, provide uh, Cortex-M processors with our device for, um, for free. So, so actually, if you download our uh, software tools, you can use uh, ARM Cortex-M1 or ARM Cortex-M3 uh, free of charge with GoWin devices. So that's soft. That's soft. And then also our hard Cortex-M3 you can also use for free in the devices that have that available. And is there an advantage also in, for developers to use soft cores before they go in hardware? Yeah, it just depends on what, what your needs are. We have a lot of customers, like for example, this uh, HDMI to LVDS solution. Okay. So this is driving uh, 1080p video um, from HDMI port and driving the display directly, a single link or a dual link LVDS display. And this is basically a cost reduction for HMI and HMI interfaces, um, both in automotive, industrial, uh, kiosk type applications. We have a lot of customers where we sell our very low cost FPGA, but then once they have that FPGA, they start integrating more features into the FPGA to, re to consume other um, components um, from their BOM. So they actually end up going to higher density to take other components, <coughs> actually just add those in the FPGA. What are you showing here? Um, so here's, this is a new device. This is our GW1 and our, <coughs> so it's the first FPGA with a built-in Bluetooth transceiver. So it has a Bluetooth transceiver, 32-bit processor, hard processor, and 4.6K lookup tables uh, of FPGA fabric. And so for unique applications where you need the flexible I.O. or maybe performance of FPGA, but also need some commu wireless communication link, um, this is a great device for that. We see that a lot of uh, IoT edge applications using that. So what's the big uh, plans for the future? What's happening at GoWin, maybe a uh, strategy? Uh, <laughs> well, there's many plans, um, but uh, yeah, uh, we just focus on um, you know really providing a differentiation with uh, power, cost, size, and features uh, for consumer, industrial, and automotive applications um, that can benefit from FPGA fabric to do applications that you can't do with any other product except for you know spinning a custom chip.